To start off, I used this Viver Flex Shaft 230 watt forward and reversible tool that has a foot control. You might think that this tool would be expensive, but it's actually under a hundred dollars from Viver. And I would highly recommend getting one of these if you're gonna be doing any amount of porting whatsoever. It has a quick release end that can be changed for this tool, which is a 90 degree tool. This I purchased separately for about $70, I believe on Amazon. And this is what you would use for doing uh, transfer ports and hard to get at spaces. What's up everyone and welcome to Lord Expectations. Thanks for lowering your expectations and hanging out with me here. I do appreciate it. In today's video, we are going to take a close look at my Viva Rotary Flex Shaft tool, which is used for all sorts of things that you would use a Dremel for, but I mainly use it for porting. If you guys are interested in picking up one of these tools for yourself, there will be an affiliate link in the description below. If you use that link, it helps me out as I get a small kickback and it will help you out as there is a discount code for 5% off. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, feel free to go down there and check it out. I have an amusing story about how I actually ended up with my Viva Rotary Flex Shaft tool, so hang in with me a few minutes and we'll actually take a closer look at it. The story starts way back when I was 10 years old. My father was a small engine mechanic who worked on a race team. He would quite frequently bring home cylinders for us to port, and we would port them out at home, sometimes at the kitchen table to my mother's dismay. So back in those days, the hot ticket to have was a Fordham style tool, which the Viver tool is, but they were outrageously expensive. And so we did most of our porting with one of these Hitachi death grinders and some of these pneumatic air grinders, an assortment of files, sandpaper, and other homemade tools. In 2019, I purchased my very own first jet ski. I decided to do some porting on it. And without doing any research whatsoever, I assumed that the Fordham style tools were still very expensive. And so I went out and bought myself one of these Dremels. This is a Dremel 3000, which does not come with the flex shaft. That is a separate tool. And so I bought the flex shaft separately. Altogether, this ended up costing me considerably more than the Viver tool, but we'll get to how I ended up with the Viver tool in just a minute. Although this does work, it does leave some things to be desired. Probably the most annoying thing about it is that the flex shaft is actually fairly low quality. After using it just a few times, this thing that is supposed to stop it from breaking, this spring actually pulled away. So I put some tape on it, but as you can see, the tape does not hold that in place. The handle gets quite hot after using it for 15 or 20 minutes or so. So I put some oil in there to try to lubricate it and well then the oil kind of sprays everywhere. The bearings and the tip were loose. I know the camera won't pick up on this but they were loose from day one when I got it and uh, they've only gotten a little bit looser over time. The most annoying thing about this tool is that it actually has one switch for all of the controls. So right now it is in the off position and then it has the speed setting. So it's off two, four, six, eight, ten, 10. And so every time you turn it on, you have to reset the setting. And then perhaps more annoying than that is it actually changes speeds on its own. So I'm gonna start it up now. I'm gonna put it on setting four and you'll actually hear it starts up. And then as you use it, I won't actually use it to make too much noise, but as you use it over time, it increases in speed, which is quite annoying. So let's turn it on and see. Hopefully you can hear that it is speeding up and it didn't actually turn on the first time I turned it on. So how did I actually end up with the Viver tool if I already had the Dremel? Well, last year in 2022, one of my Patreon supporters asked me what I would recommend for porting tools because he was considering porting his jet ski. So because I was answering this question for someone else and not for myself, I actually did a bit of research and found out that the Fordham style tools have come down considerably in price. After doing a whole bunch of research, I made a post on my Patreon page where I recommended this exact unit along with some tooling and gave some other advice. 
I then very quickly realized that it was silly of me to own a Dremel while I was recommending this tool to other people. And so that is the story of how I ended up with this Beaver Rotary Flex Shaft tool. Since then, I have ported my Crash KV 997. I made a video of that and posted it back in December. And since then, I have used this tool for doing all sorts of other things. And uh, yeah, I've enjoyed it. Now that I've explained how I ended up with the Viva Rotary Flex Shaft tool, I will also point out that I did purchase this tool with my own money long before I was affiliated with Viva. Now let's take a closer look at the tool itself. We'll look at the specifications, some of the attachments that I've purchased for it, also the tooling and some of the most common ways that this tool would be used. Let's get the boring specifications out of the way and then we'll take a closer look at the actual tool itself. The label on the back of it says model SR 110 or 220 volts, 50 hertz, 0.9 amps, 230 watts, 18,000 RPM, which is absolutely ridiculous. I assume that not many people will actually ever use it at that speed, but it does have a foot pedal, so it is very controllable and you don't need to use it at that speed. Now, to look at the tool itself, the first thing you will notice when you pick this up is how substantial it is. This thing is built like a tank. The body of it is made out of a cast aluminum, which is very substantial. This thing just feels like it could take a lot of abuse. It has a strain relief on the back for the power cord that goes directly into the back here. And uh, it also looks like it is very substantial. It has replaceable brushes that come out on each side. We have a metal hanger for hanging it that is held in with screws that all look fairly substantial. And it is held together, the, the casings are held together with four, I believe four millimeter hex head or Allen screws. Everything looks very robust, very rugged, very impressive. And as soon as you pick, up, pick it up, the weight of it just tells you that this thing is built fairly well. Uh, on the bottom of it, we have where the flex shaft connects but we're actually going to go all the way to the other end and check out the tool itself because before I pull this off, I want to pull this off and show you guys uh, inside here. Not inside here, but show you that it comes off. So the chuck that it uses, it comes with this chuck key and the chuck that it uses will go, I don't remember how small, I'll try to put that on the screen, but it basically will go all the way down to almost nothing. Yeah, pretty much nothing, and it will also hold quarter inch. So one of the problems with the Dremel, this will only hold one eighth inch, and because it uses a collet style holder, you are limited to what size you can actually use. Anyway, this will hold a wide range of tooling, and uh, it holds it very securely because of the drill style chuck. Comes with this nice tool, which makes it very easy to work with has a cutaway slot in the side of the tool itself so that you don't get your fingers caught in the moving gear part here and so that that also doesn't tear up stuff that you're working on which is very nice. Down here uh, just between the flex shaft and the tool itself there is a little ball detent and what that is for is when you pull on this it actually just pulls apart just like that. And so if you want to put different Fordham style tools on here, you can. We'll take a closer look at my 90 degree tool now, which came separately. I actually got this off Amazon for $70. And uh, this is good for doing, well, anything where you need a 90 degree tool. I use it for doing transfer ports on engines and uh, it does come in very handy for that. So when you put it together, there is a little dog or a little key on the shaft itself. You need to make sure that that is lined up with the keyway inside of the tool. Once it's lined up, you just simply give it a push and it clicks into place. That is how easy it is to change the tools. So now we will take a little bit closer look at the shaft. And I was very impressed by this. Uh, this is some sort of fiberglass reinforced plastic. It is very substantial. Uh, this is a left-hand thread. What I was very impressed with is that this is actually 
uh, o-ring sealed up in this area the piece that goes on the bottom here again is cast aluminum and it is held on with four Phillips head screws along the top of this threaded area there is an o-ring in there that actually keeps this completely sealed which was kind of mind-blowing to me the flex shaft is replaceable if this wears out or breaks you can replace it it is held on by a hex key here and there is a flat spot on the shaft which will make that remove come off very easily so the tube comes off and it is a very well made shaft uh, flex shaft it has a spring around the outside of it to make for a good bearing surface and the material itself is wound very well you can tell by looking at it it is actually just made very well and is very durable compared to the dremel tool this is quite a bit more flexible and usable and uh, the fact that it has the changeable tools well that makes it even better now that we've taken a look at the outside of the tool let's crack into it and actually look at the inside and see how that is built so uh, i'm going to remove the flex shaft first i've never actually done this i've removed the sheath but i've never removed the key and actually pulled the shaft off i didn't have any reason to so we'll just loosen off this set screw here and then i will assume this simply pulls off wow yeah it did i guess also before we get inside we should take a look at the brushes let's prop pop the brush holders out okay oh wow they make that really easy wow no cutting or soldering or anything just actual easily replaceable brushes if you ever use this tool enough to wear them out look how long that is <laughs> that's a lot of use okay we'll put that back in we won't bother pulling the other one out because it's going to be the exact same thing i am quite shocked by that all right set those screws aside oh that pops right off that's what that looks like i thought maybe it would have the bearing in it but it doesn't there is a seal or isolator insulator something in here we'll leave that there for now it looks like it goes around the bearing the bearing is a 628z or z depending where you're from four millimeter allen key let's pull this apart i think it's a four it sure is i should probably have some uh paper towel down here not just for uh filming sake but also so i don't scratch it all up because it is quite nice once i loosened it up this brush carrier kind of popped out a little bit as soon as i pull this thing apart it is very clear that this thing is built like an absolute tank look at that this is all cast aluminum that is solid stuff right there this is kind of ridiculous this brush is moved out slightly so it might not work but i am going to try to uh, power it up here and see what happens there we go amazing how quiet that is even disassembled i'm not going to bother taking this apart any further than it already is we can already see everything we need to see here and uh, i'm not going to risk breaking it unnecessarily so we can see everything in here is built fairly robust the bearings are cushioned which keeps it nice and quiet and allows everything to align or self-align the brush holders i was a little bit worried about because they look like plastic from the outside but as you guys can see the part that actually makes contact with the brushes is brass 
And it has this very interesting copper coil that makes contact between, well, the electric circuit and the brass brush holder itself. That is very interesting. I've never seen that before. Everything in here looks extremely robust and the aluminum case should have no problem dissipating heat. So all in all, this makes me feel even more comfortable now that I've taken it apart and looked inside. So I'm now gonna put it all back together off camera. Then we'll come back and look at some of the tooling I have. The Viva Rotary Flex Shaft tool does come with a few accessories. It comes with a grinding stone, a couple buffing wheels, and a couple of brushes, as well as an Allen key and a chuck key for the chuck. However, I don't really use this stuff. I found that it is way more useful and very cost effective to just buy your own tooling. So I'm gonna show you guys what I use, uh, some specialty tools that I don't use very often and the most common things that I use. This is one of my tool holders. It is simply a scrap piece of wood with some 1 8 holes drilled in it and that's where I keep my 1 8 shank tools. These are the ones that I use most commonly over here, the 1 8 burrs. They come in all sorts of different profiles. As you can see, there's a pointy one, there's a squared off one, there's a reverse cone one, so on and so forth. The ones on this side are all for cutting steel and the ones on this side are for cutting softer metals like aluminum. The teeth are spaced further apart so that they don't jam up. I also have a set of these in quarter inch. These are used for hogging out larger amounts of material. And I typically use these with my air die grinder, but they do fit in the chuck of the Viva Rotary Flex Shaft tool. I also have a container full of these longer shank ones. These are very handy for porting and also very handy for reaching, well, any hard to get space. They come in all sorts of different profiles. Once again, we've got the bulbous shaped one, we've got a ball shaped one, all sorts of different profiles, just like those. These are steel cutting bits. And then we have diamond tipped cutters. So I got these as a set. I don't use them very frequently, but when I need them, they do come in very handy. I also have these discs that I believe I got off Amazon. They go onto a shank like this, a 1 8 shank, and they can be used for cutting tiles again, and other harder materials, tiles, glass, ceramics, all sorts of stuff like that. I have a bunch of these, and they do come in very handy when you need them. They are basically a cutoff tool similar to this. This is an abrasive cutoff tool which is made out of some sort of oxide, uh, aluminum oxide or something like that. But these do not wear out nearly as quickly and you can use them for cutting much harder materials. Next up I have an assortment of abrasive sanding drums. So I've got this one I believe is half inch and then three eighths and quarter inch. These have a rubber insert that swells up when you tighten the screw on the end and you get replaceable sanding drums like this that go on over them. You can get these things on Amazon and I have this whole container of different assortments here as well as a collection elsewhere. I also have these sanding drums which are kind of the same thing but come with a different mandrel that just screws into the end. You use this until it's worn out and then you replace it. There are different sizes, like I said, and uh, they do come in quite handy. I also have an assortment of sanding cones. This is a homemade mandrel for one of the sanding cones. This is a bag of 80 grit cones, which slide on over the end of the mandrel. And this is a bag of 240 grit cones that slide over the end of the same mandrel. If you don't want to bother with fussing around with removing and reinstalling them from a mandrel, you can buy these ones on Amazon that just come with the cones attached. You use it up and when it's done, you throw it in the trash. The last thing I'm going to share with you guys is something that I just found out existed in 2019 when I was porting my jet ski engine. And that is these absolutely wonderful 3M Scotch Bright knockoff polishing wheels. You simply pop one of these in the end of your chuck 
and then you have a polishing tip. These are great for polishing all sorts of different materials, brass, copper, steel, silver, whatever. I use it for mostly for polishing uh, ports on uh, jet ski engines. But uh, yeah, great for removing gasket material or stuck on glue from a gasket surface. And uh, I'm sure you guys can come up with all sorts of other uses. The reason why they are different colors is because they are different grits. So you can polish down to a different level. And uh, that is the end of show and tell. I briefly mentioned in this video that the Viva Rotary Flex Shaft Grinder comes with a quick detach tool, but I didn't go over it in detail, so we're gonna touch on it a little bit now. This is how easy the tool comes off. And to put it back on, there is a key on the end of the shaft, and you simply rotate the chuck till the key falls into the keyway, then you give it a push, and presto, you are ready to rock and roll again. If you need to get at a tighter spot or have some sort of different task that you need a different tool for, well, go pick up yourself one of these on Amazon. This was about $70. You can get all sorts of different tools for all sorts of different tasks, and they go on just in the same way. Rotate the bit to make sure the keyway is lined up with the key. Give it a little bit of a push and you are ready to rock and roll. They sell these on Amazon, eBay, AliExpress, all sorts of different places. Unfortunately, they don't sell the quick change tool itself on uh, Viver, but it does come with this tool. This is actually what I use most of the time. It is a very high quality tool and uh, I am very pleased with it. Now that I've gone on at length about how amazing this tool is, and it truly is, I'm now gonna talk about the one thing that doesn't truly excite me about this tool, and that is the foot pedal. Now, keep in mind, I have used this tool for well over a hundred hours now. I've ported two different engines with it, as well as done a whole bunch of other tasks around the shop. I walk in out of the snowy Canadian north across my completely disgusting floor with aluminum filings all over it and put my feet all over this thing and as you guys can see it doesn't look any worse for the wear. That being said it does feel kind of chintzy compared to the tool itself. It is very very light. It sounds cheap and uh, yeah I'm assuming it is very cheap given the total price of the kit. The way that the Viva Rotary Flex Shaft tool works is you have a household style plug that goes to the tool, but I would suggest that you don't actually plug this into the wall. If you do so, the tool will take off at full speed. So what they do is they have this foot switch that goes in between. The tool plugs into this end and the other end of this longer cord goes into a wall outlet. You then have the foot control in between and when you step on this, you can control the speed of the tool. This is actually quite handy. If you want to replace or upgrade this, you can very easily. You can purchase these, but you can pay probably four or five times as much for a foot pedal as you actually pay for the whole Viva Rotary tool kit. I'm gonna continue using this because it has worked flawlessly for me. And if it does break because of my dirty, grimy feet, I won't be too upset about it because, well, it came with the kit. I didn't actually pay anything extra for it. As I'm sure you guys can tell, I am very impressed with this tool. Before shooting this video, I was pretty impressed with it. I had used it to do two different porting jobs, uh, do some other work on some jet skis, and just random nonsense around my garage over the last several months. However, after shooting this video, taking it apart, looking inside, and seeing how well it is built, I am even more impressed. If you guys are interested in picking one of these up for yourself, once again, there is an affiliate link in the description below. If you use that link, it helps me out as I get a small kickback. There is also a discount code down there for 5% off, so if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, feel free to check it out. If you guys want to support me on Patreon, there is a link in the description below to that as well, as well as a link to my other channel. That is going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.